Right. Uh, hello, everybody, and Happy New Year. Um, we'll see how we get on with this. Uh, as you can see, I have made a start. I've put the thing on the canvas, and I have deliberately shown my construction lines because I want to take you through that construction first. Um, if we the start. Right, the first thing I did was to find the center of the canvas, both vertically and horizontally. Uh, this isn't usually the way I work, but I wanted to get the bell in the middle of the picture. There didn't seem to be any value in placing it to one side or the other uh, that I could see compositionally. Now, the next thing to do was to get the bell to be symmetrical. I know that this side of the bell can't be seen, but if I want to place this particularly in its right perspective, I've got to at least show this side on my drawing um, so that I get the thing in the right place. So I followed the um, instructions. If you think back to when we were looking at drawing, uh, I created on that center line a small box which was um, equidistant over either side of that line, and in, in practically square, to take in the top of the bell. And then the bell flares. So I made the box underneath that to take in the far distant points of the bell, this way getting it symmetrical, and followed the curve as best I could to get that shape. The curve at the bottom of the bell comes below the line in both cases because uh, because of the angle of the photograph. Now the next thing to do, well, put on these decorative bits which are on the center line. Um, I didn't take a lot of trouble about drawing them, just putting them in to get the proportions in more or less the right place. Uh, because once you start painting, you cover most of this, it doesn't make any sense. Now, the other difficult thing is this uh, medallion, or whatever you want to call it, coat of arms, which is not in the middle of the picture. The bell is twisted somewhat in the picture, so that isn't central. The actual central point of the picture is there. So it's above the center point, so it's above there, and more to that side of the center line than this. And it's so easy when you're looking at it to just pull everything central. It's, it's what we do. You'll know yourself when you first started drawing houses, you, even if they were diagonal, you pull them around a bit to make it face you. It's so, it's such a common thing to do and I still do it, even though I know I shouldn't. Right. So that's that's the drawings done. And I made it in a darker paint so that you could actually see the construction lines instead of me talking about things that are barely visible because they're just pencil lines. Right. Now I put the picture to one side because there's an awful lot of background to, to cover in here and it needs thinking about. Uh, I put out um, white, of course, but I've got um, burnt sienna, uh, leather and crimson, Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, and um, ultramarine violet. These are all colours that make nice darks. And if you look at the picture, the uh, I don't know if your reproduction of it was coloured, but there certainly are various colours in the background which aren't focused, but they are there and will make the picture much more interesting. So um, I better start. Can't say I've thought about this in sufficient depth to make me feel competent, but um, if you don't try, you don't get anywhere. So we'll start with a little bit of blue. I'm keeping it pretty thin. Uh, add a little bit of 
um, the violet. It's pretty thin, so even if I take it over things, it's not going to um, hide them too much. It's running down beautifully, isn't it? It's going to make quite a nice, interesting background, this. Um, Prussian blue. Um, put the Prussian blue on this side. Oh gosh, I, I forgot Prussian blue is such a beast, isn't it? Um, pressing on the, the brush to make the paint run. Put a little bit of the yeah, those are in there. And again, I'm making it run. Oh, this is fun. I like doing this. When I first started painting with George, this was one of the first techniques he showed me. Uh, I don't want that. I don't want that Prussian blue to inform all this, so I'm going to take that bit of away. It's getting too um, too dominant there, and because I've got it so runny, it's running all over my palette too. I don't want to spoil my good trousers. There we are. Right, so I carry on with this now. Um, Put in a bit of a little crimson over here. And again, make it run. It's much more fun if it runs. Make it run. That blue up there could be a bit darker, couldn't it? That's better. Put the purple in here. I'm already losing this side because it does lose. I like that alizarin, rather looks rather quite good over there, doesn't it? I had no idea I was going to do this when I started. I'd forgotten about painting like this. It happened by Accident, but then yeah, that's life, isn't it? Now, I wonder if I ought to stick in a bit of brown on this now. There was an awful lot of woodwork behind the bell. Um, and that... Um, I think the brown might go nicely over there now, actually. Make some more interesting uh, mixture with the Prussian blue. I like the way it gallops down the page, it's really fascinating. And then we'll introduce a bit more of the brown. Again, two adventures over here. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose the symmetry. It took such a, a long um, effort to get. And since uh, this red paint is uh, was only put on yesterday, it dissolves very easily in the. Um, And the paint I'm putting on now. Unfortunately, so does the drawing. So it's not so good. Right. I think this could go back to the blue down here now.
and that blue. Perhaps I could balance a bit of the Prussian over here. This is not important. I can paint over that bit. I know what I'm going there. I'm just playing around with the colours, putting them on where I, I think they were to go, um, and seeing what sort of results I get. I do want it to go down in lines. That's not going to work, is it? I think. Okay, in fact. Quite like that brown up there. And if I bring it back here. over here. Right, ultramarine violet. It's gone black there. Happy accident, major disaster. Depends on how you're feeling. I'm just scrubbing the line up, so you know, at this stage it doesn't matter what you're doing. Right. I still think I could go a bit darker up there. Come on, boys. Like watching paint dry. If, well, if this goes horribly wrong, it doesn't matter because I can always paint over it. It's not, uh, it's not a major disaster.
what's interesting is that Heck, I'll call them the canvas then. It's creating a, a different shape. Don't let it go there. Right, while that's running, Wet. I'm going to take my paint rag, clear away bits of this. Okay. That's going to be a distraction. So, let's see if I can move it. Right, now then, I'm just going to stand back for a moment because this is when and you can judge what, what's happened. Oh, me. Hang on, have a disaster. Right, uh, I think this has got a little bit too samey. That side's worked quite nicely, this side hasn't. Uh, so I'm going to take some more of that red and put it in here. And it's going to have to go on thicker than this eventually because those lines aren't aren't actually going and I need to cover them. And that is going to be tremendous too. Still in my to move it. Right, so I quite like that, but I think I'm going to need to beef it up a bit. It's basically a still life, so you've got to do something to make it interesting, haven't you? Right, this is still quite thin paint, uh, but it's not as runny. Where it's run nicely, I can leave it. Where it's misbehaving, 
um, I can Uh, just trying to tighten it down a bit. Do you think that makes the more interesting shapes? It's a bit more sweet. Try over here now.
10 minutes. Right. Thank you, dear. Well, like I say, I'm not sure that this is going to stay. Um, it was good fun. Well worth a try. Uh, what You're just looking for an effect that pleases you. Uh, so, no mind about the bell at the moment. We can sort him out when we get there. Assuming we do get there. Yeah, that, that's got a swing to it, almost as if the bell was going to, um, going to toll. Mm. I think I'm going to leave it there for the time being, perhaps. Um, let's look at the picture. It's always useful to look at the picture. Right, it goes into quite a lot of darkness down here, so I think I have to add a bit of something there. Here, under the bell. That may have to be added later. If you leave it long enough, it does run. You've just got to have the patience to let it run. And that's something I don't possess. I'm constantly fiddling um, with how I want the effect to be. So it's been a very funny lesson, actually, I would think, for you. I hope what it's done is give you a bit of courage to have a go at doing something that isn't perhaps quite comfortable enough for you. <laughs>